My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. At the end of this PCC Image Tools Image Processing Made Easy tutorial, you will be able to use the many different image processing tools incorporated in PCC. These image processing techniques can be applied to the entire recording, alone or in combination, to bring out hidden features and details. The type of effects available will be dependent upon the camera model and type, monochrome or color, the cine or images were recorded from, along with how the camera was set to record the cine. Not all image processing techniques are appropriate for every image. Vision Research recommends you experiment with the image processing effects to find the best enhancements for your needs. When using a monitor to apply image processing effects, the white balance control and all brightness, contrast, gamma, and color adjustments should be changed only when using a monitor that is in a correct adjustment. Occasionally, an operator will over adjust the monitor settings in extreme lighting conditions, such as in direct sunlight, in an attempt to get a better look at what he or she is trying to image. Correcting the appearance of images on a poorly adjusted monitor will have a negative result on Cine recordings that will later be reviewed on a properly adjusted monitor under normal conditions. To best demonstrate the various image processing techniques, I'm going to use a variety of previously recorded Cine files. The first Cine to be used will be the Chip Cine. With the Cine selected and opened in a play panel, I'll open the Image Tools dialog window by selecting the Image Tools toolbar button. The Image Tools available will be dependent on the camera model used to record the Cine and the settings used to record the Cine. With that being said, let's talk about the various image processing tools available in PCC. At the top of the window is a histogram. The image histogram is a graphical representation of the distribution of RGB, red, green, and blue pixels for color cameras only, and their luminance, grayscale values for all cameras, within the image presently being displayed in the active or selected preview or play panel. Each of these values appears on the horizontal axis from dark to light, or from left to right. The vertical axis indicates the number of pixels of that value of each point. The line spikes at a point where there are many pixels of the value. Where there are no pixels, it lays at the bottom of the graph. It also indicates an average value of all the pixels in the image. Since this city was recorded using a color camera, I can choose to view a histogram of all the red pixels, the green pixels, the blue pixels, or all colors combined. I'm going to reset this back to gray to display the luminance or grayscale levels of the pixels. Under the adjustment selector, I can adjust the standard curve applied to the images by selecting the desired curve from the pull-down selection list. Phantom logs map the sensor's linear data using a low contrast, high dynamic range curve. This is accomplished by the apparent boost in sensitivity and disables most image processing parameters. When log mode is selected, most of these variables are locked and cannot be adjusted. It also allows me to adjust the brightness of the images by moving the slider left to darken the images or right to make them brighter. Notice as I change the brightness percentage, the histogram average changes and the pixel representations move based on the value set. I can even type in a desired brightness value between minus 10, darker, to 10, lighter. I'm going to reset this back to its default value of 1 and hit the Enter key. Adjusting the gain increases or decreases the individual luminance or grayscale or RGB red, green, blue levels.
just as the brightness percentage did. The histogram average and pixel representations will change to reflect the gain value changes. The gain can also be entered in its associated data entry field. The valid range is between 0.1 darker to 10 lighter. I'm going to reset this back to its default value of 1 and hit the enter key. The gamma setting is used to bring out details of the images by adjusting the nonlinear relationship between the signal levels and the brightness of their output. A small signal level change at low voltage produces a larger variation in brightness than the same change in levels at a high voltage. Adjusting this gamma setting is the compensation for this nonlinearity. The same methods used to adjust the brightness and gains can be used to adjust the gamma. The valid range of the gamma setting is from 0.1 to 10. I'm going to set it back to its default setting of 2.222. Toe adjusts the lower portion of the gamma curve only. Lowering the toe value will lift the shadow detail without affecting the highlights. The valid range of the toe setting is from 0.1 to 2. By default, the setting is 1. Saturation, available with color cameras only, adjusts the color saturation of the images being displayed. The factory default value is set to 1. The valid range is from 0 to 2. White balance adjustments can be made manually by moving the sliders or entering a value in the respective data entry fields. The camera model the images are from determine the available options. As you can see here, my options include Gain Red, which adjusts the red value of the images, and Gain Blue, which adjusts the blue value of the images. Or, let me open another Cine to show you this. I can manually adjust the white balance by adjusting the color temperature, or Kelvin, which will also adjust the red and blue color components, and the tint, which will adjust the magenta and green on top of the color temperature. Notice, as I adjust the gain red and gain blue options described a moment ago, that they not only adjust their values, but they also adjust the temperature and tint settings. The white balance feature has its own default white balance button. When selected, it resets the white balance settings to the factory default values. Before I move on, I want to zoom in on the image three times and center in on the area of interest. You'll see why in just a moment. Color cameras use a color interpolation algorithm to display and save image data. PCC allows us to select the interpolation algorithm by selecting it from a pull-down selection list. The color interpolation algorithm can be set to best, good, medium, fast, fastest, or none. These settings have to do with the quality of the debayer. The best option will interpolate the fine details area well. However, it is not recommended for large flat fields of color while the fastest algorithm will remove most of the color information so the refresh rate of the PC is optimized. None removes all the color information and will result in the fastest refresh rate of all. The medium option is the default and is the recommended algorithm for most situations. Also, if I were to select the fastest option, PCC will spend less processing power on image processing thereby allowing other processes to speed up, like saving files. But there is a trade-off when I select fastest. Notice when I change this option to fastest, how the images become much more pixelated and lose a little of their saturation. As I improve my selection choice, notice how the image quality improves and the saturation increases slightly.
If I select none, notice all color has been removed from the images. And if you look closely, you can see what looks like you're seeing the images through a screen door. The screen door effect is the color filter array used to determine colors. OK, with all that being said, I'm going to set this option to best. For the next portion of this tutorial, I'm going to use another city, the Shock Tube 1 city. I'm going to bypass the filter options for a little while. I first want to talk about the sensitivity slider, which we covered in the Using Bit Depth and Low Light Features tutorial. Cameras that are or were set to bit depths greater than 8 while they were capturing or displaying their images being saved add a sensitivity slider used to increase the gain on the low order bits that have image data in them that is too dark to see. Using the sensitivity slider allows me to increase the gain of these low ordered bits to bring out the data captured by them. As you can see the image appears to be black. However, the histogram shows me that the sensor is capturing image data. By moving the sensitivity slider to the right, I instruct PCC to increase the gain on those low order bits, bringing up the image data they collected, or in this case recorded. Although the image quality is not the quality we have become accustomed to, from an engineering perspective it doesn't matter. I can perform test measurements on the subject, and that's what I need. As I advance to Cine, you will easily notice that the illumination of my subject is going to saturate my image, so I'll readjust the slider to compensate for this. Now I'll apply a filter to the images to help bring out the details in the images that might otherwise be difficult to see, such as edge detection for measuring moving objects. To determine the best edge detection algorithm to use, I'll try each one and make a decision on which one works best for the Cine. And if I eliminate the color saturation, it will enhance the edge detection even more. So I'll do that now. After trying each of the edge detection algorithms, I decided the edge high pass 3x3 seems to work best for me. So I'm going to use that one. As I advance the Cine, you'll notice it is very easy to track the front of the shock tube pulse. I could have enhanced my images even more by applying other image processing techniques if I wanted to. Before I move on, I'm going to reset the Cine settings back to their default values by clicking the default button, then close the Cine's play panel. To gain a little more real estate on the display, I'm going to close the adjustment selector and open the advanced adjustment selector. These advanced adjustments are normally considered advanced color matching tools. They are applied on top of the overall gamma and color corrections. For this piece, I'm going to use yet another Cine, the Multiview Jets iRig 3 Cam Miro 4 Cine 1 file. The flare percentage adjustment can help correct the color tint in the shadows, which can occur in high contrast situations. Notice there is some lens flare in the image. The flare percentage allows me to reduce or increase that flare to my needs. Let me show you what I mean. Notice, as I move the slider to the left, the lens flare is reduced. Conversely, when I move it to the right, the lens flare becomes more dominant. I simply need to set this to meet my requirements. I just wanted to show you this field, so I'm going to reset it back to zero. To demonstrate the remaining advanced adjustments, I'm going to open another city. The following advanced adjustments will only be available if the active panel's images are color. I'm also going to change the histogram from gray to colors, 
so you can see what's happening to the individual red, green, and blue color channels of the image. As I make adjustments, I want you to notice how they change the displayed images and how each color channel and channel bar are affected. The RGB red, green, blue pedestal adjustments will raise or lower the black level of each independent color channel. As you can see, the pedestal options allow me to adjust the percentage of individual red, green, and blue channel pedestals. Like most of the adjustments, I can use the sliders or enter a value in the respective data entry field to do this. The valid ranges for each channel is from negative 10 to 10. The default value is 0. I'm going to reset these to their default value. I could also adjust the individual red, green, and blue gains between a value of 0.1 to 10 for each color channel. I'm going to reset these values to their default value of 1. The RGB red, green, blue, gamma will apply an independent gamma curve to each color channel and is only available on select camera models. The individual red, green, and blue gamma values can be adjusted between 0.1 and 10. Their default value is 2.222. I'm going to reset these to their default value. The remaining image tools will be covered in the PCC Image Tools Part 2 Image Processing Made Easy tutorial. So that concludes the PCC Image Tools Part 1 Image Processing Made Easy tutorial where you learn how to apply a few of the image processing techniques incorporated in PCC and the benefits they bring.